All right, hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Michael Dario Beggy from Ginkgo Street Labs, uh, based in DC. Uh, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about um, reporting with Civi CRM and also get you guys involved a little bit, exercise your vocal cords, uh, and share uh, what sort of uh, questions you have, what sort of insights you might have gained already, um, and what, what you guys use reporting for in your organization. Um, so um, it will be a little mix of uh, demonstration of uh, the capabilities of Civi CRM. Make sure you know what's available to you, um, when to ask for help, um, and uh, show you what you can do with them. and. And I hope to finish up with us uh, kind of breaking out into groups and actually trying out configuring reports and, and getting to the, the questions, the analysis that you want to do. So um, how many people here saw the session description and came ready with their login to their, their CRM and wanting to uh, share? See, a handful. OK, yeah. <laughs> no, we won't, uh, we won't put your, your contact data up on the screen for everybody to see your data. Um, so I will try to, um, to get to Civi Visualize as quickly as possible, but <laughs> we'll, we'll not gloss over um, some important things before we get there. Um, unfortunately, at, at this point, Civi Visualize is not very configurable as an end user, but I can say I've, I've looked at the code and the framework they built, and it's a great tool for a developer to put together new reports. Um, so Definitely look at it, try to understand it. Um, the default reports are very useful to, to get going, and um, you'll be able to hire a developer for not too much to customize those for you. Um, so just a quick overview so we know what we're talking about. Um, so obviously, um, you know, reports are a wide variety of things. You know, it um, might be a formal report that you're printing out annually or um, reports to your supervisors or simple Excel exports, just spreadsheets um, that you're doing ad hoc calculations on. Hopefully no permanent solutions in, uh, in spreadsheets. Um, <clears throat> so we'll cover the Civi reports component. Um, so you make sure you know how to export data, um, which you can do from almost any search. Um, we'll cover various dashboards really quickly, which can give you just a quick high-level view of what's going on. Uh, dashlets. How many people use uh, the dashlets and configure their dashboards? Great, yeah. Okay, Om almost half you. That's good. That's a little surprising to me in a good way. Uh, and, of course, Civi Visualize, very cool new um, extension. Uh, so. Hopefully by now you've found the reports menu in Civi, and uh, there's a long list of uh, default reports to come. Um, and as I mentioned, exports can be very useful for uh, something ad hoc that you hadn't planned for. So how many people are aware that if you did a search, you can select uh, an action there to export? Again, great, great. Uh, here's a very small glimpse of uh, Civi Visualize and the dashboard in general. So Civi Visualize will give you some reports that you can get to from the reporting menu, but also you can add those to your dashboard. Um, so why do we do reports? I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but I find it helpful to articulate things. Um, you know, we use reports for feedback cycle. Hopefully we're doing constant improvement in our organizations and reflecting on what we're doing. We do it to gain insights into our operations. Uh, we do it to close out and reflect on our <coughs> programs and campaigns, uh, find correlations between our activities and our outcomes, and of course facilitate budgeting and other operational planning. So um, what are some other reasons that you guys are doing reporting? Anybody want to volunteer something? Yeah. Well, one of the key things that we've seen from this international view that we get with social venture partners and also in particular in Dallas mm -hmm. is that 
it seems that the real push, especially from the big foundation funders, mm -hmm. is metrics-based proof that you've achieved what we gave you the money for. Right. If you can't report properly, you can't possibly show the metrics that would give that proof. So it's a really big piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Very important for development and keeping your funding going. Anybody else? Anything I've mentioned? Yeah. We want to be able to look at campaigns that were both successful and unsuccessful and compare the two and understand, maybe see the reasons why, if, if there's something that keeps coming up in the unsuccessful ones, or something that's in the successful campaigns that we, that we can replicate every time. Mm -hmm. Great, so finding best practices, and yeah. Tomas? I use this. Uh, like reports for leadership development on the developing a base mm -hmm. to track all sorts of activities right. that show the ladder of leadership. Mm -hmm. So yeah, leadership and community organizing. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, so reporting strategies. Um, I'll share a few that I thought of, uh, but I hope you guys have some strategies to share as well. Um, so I think. A big thing is to um, planning your data and, and having reporting be part of the picture from, from the get-go um, because we've seen a lot of uh, cases where people just start collecting data. You know, it's common to have uh, custom data sprawl and, um, and the worst is when people don't plan how are they going to analyze that data and therefore don't, um, don't make it so that you can actually like sum it up, you know, or you're collecting uh, text fields where you just have people enter in a value and there's no uh, standardization of that. Um, and, and also just uh, making sure that you have appropriate labels so that, you know, if you're collecting signups from people uh, that you're, you're tagging it appropriately either by an activity or by an appeal, some way that you got them to come to your event, for example. Um, so that <clears throat> planning how, how are you going to slice and dice that data at the end and what are you going to be looking for? Um, you know, what, what is the goal that you're going to measure? So having that at the beginning is going to be, uh, you're going to thank yourself later when you realize, oh, we should have tracked that or, oh, we should have standardized this field or, oh, we should have had more um, demographics on who we're interacting with. Um, so has anybody experienced any other challenges to um, keeping their data clean and useful? Any, any hard, hard lessons? Lots. Lots. <laughs> you want to share one? Or? Our data is still not clean. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, we built a number of external fundraising systems that are pushing data into the CRM. rules and the methods on which we inserted it and the things that we would check to make sure that we were inserting bad data. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not good in the beginning, they've gotten better. Yeah. But reporting is pretty useless with that data. Yeah, it's kind of the same experience. I've been in a couple of months up here. All kinds of data from you know, the database and spreadsheets were just, I would use just dumped in there. Uh, okay. And if there was a rhyme or reason, there was no notes behind it. That right. Didn't like make sense. So again, <coughs> it's, it's hard. Yeah, my you don't want to just ignore all that data right. from long-term donors, but it's just it feels kind of useless. Yeah, migrations can be an important watershed moment to um, identify what data you've tra you've been tracking and how it's going to relate to the the new data. Oftentimes, you have a brand new system that enables all this new data collection, and you don't no, you, you can't correlate the old data with the new data. So that, that's something that's very worth the, um, the effort to say, okay, you know, we used to track it like this, and now we're going to track it like this, so let's, let's um, transform that data before we bring it in and not just dump it into our system. <coughs> so in terms of how do we prepare before we start data collection, um, and it seems obvious, but I, I think often people don't go through a formal process of, Let's have a meeting, let's talk to different departments and say, you know, what questions do we want to answer? Um, so it's like, where are we at this point in time? Where are we in terms of reaching our goal? 
um, you know, have, was the, um, did our, our, our strategy succeed or fail? You know, how did we measure up? Uh, and where are we not tapping into potential, um, either our staff resources or our constituencies? Um, so does anybody want to share some, some, question, some questions that they want answered by their reports? Uh, we want to know of the people we called to mm -hmm. turn out, how many turned out. So like the ratio of, you know, how many calls we make. We make 200 calls, we know that about 20 turn out. So that we can make. I know we want to be able to track our new donor co cohorts throughout the years um, okay. and see how they're performing year after year after year and check out our retention on them. Um, of a group of participants, which ones have, or how, how many have been a participant before versus new, new versus returning? Great. Yes? I've actually got, maybe that's true, but the more challenging reports for me are, okay, we work with these elder care facilities, how many volunteers and what volunteers are which facilities, and trying to track those relationships is, is tough for us. I don't know that we necessarily have set it up right to begin with. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I have one more. How about um, how many new people are um, in part of the city and from what sources are they coming from? The growth of your membership. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Can I just add a part to that? Mm -hmm. Similar. Um, I'd like to view in my report uh, when people um, join the mailing list. Great. Okay. So, once you ask these questions, you know, then you can move on to what tools are you. the data and dump into a spreadsheet? Are you going to, uh, you know, do the, does the, the dashboard answer your question? Do you need to customize a report? Um, yeah, what, what have you. So, um, oh, and <clears throat> asking, once you've identified the question, you say, where is that data going to come from? How are we going to answer that, that question? And Hopefully, most of the time, it's, well, if you care, I'm not going to collect that. But, um, <laughs> but you might also have, uh, I don't know, house meetings and paper sign-in sheets for some reason. Um, so identifying where, where is those points of data collection. And then also, very importantly, is who needs to be looking at that report? How often do they need to look at it? Uh, so, quick word about segmenting data. Um, I think we got some um, some hints of that, like uh, um, the new donors or, or new members. Um, so, uh, how many people are familiar with campaigns in City CRM? Great, at least half of you. Yep. Um, so, campaigns are a great, flexible way to um, to tag. Activities in the city CRM, events, contribution pages. Um, so, and that that gives you a great filter uh, in in reports to drill down, uh, separate out different um, pieces of data. Uh, and of course, you can use your demographics, your uh, either the built-in fields in city or custom fields that you might have, um, uh, relationships. <laughs> Of course, time and, and dates of activity can be important um, 
ways to segment your data. Um, and you might also track your, um, the tactics that you're using. If you're trying to uh, work on your strategies, then you have, um, you know, whether you're doing uh, phone appeals or mail appeals. Uh, so again, just think about how are you going to drill down into your data, compare uh, the effectiveness of different things. Um, does anybody want to share some, some segmentation <coughs> strategies that they've used? Well, I would just say that one of the things I've noticed with uh, at least one of the nonprofits I've worked with is they enable people to make up tags so they could pull their reports together the way they want them, which is very good and powerful. Mm -hmm. At the same time, when you're doing that, it's some way to have someone responsible for how many tags you end up with and how many could have been the same tag so that you can correlate them. So having tags is wonderful. Having someone be responsible for them is another step to making sure they're really meaningful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and that's another case where you know having free form text can, can be a, a downside. You, know, you want to have a little bit of central organization and say, OK, this is the tag we're going to use. Make that a select box instead of a free text. Um, like recovering, like um, we had donors from two years ago, but mm -hmm. they didn't give last year. But now we want to approach them with maybe an email <coughs> or a phone call. So uh, recovering donors. Okay. And we do a lot with um, segmenting by membership type mm -hmm. and by. Um, relationship within member organization. Great. Okay. <coughs> uh, so, as several of you mentioned, you know, you may have been using Civi for a while, and you know, you've you've implemented Civi. Um, people are creating data left and right, uh, but you then have to um, actually encourage best practices within your organization and encourage a culture of people actually looking at those reports. I mean, just because it's there doesn't mean somebody's going and pulling it, um, even though it might be critical to, to their job. Um, unless you talk about it regularly um, and try to uh, provide training for that, um, making it easy so having the dashboard, so it's like right there when you log in, that, they, that report's right there in their face. Or um, definitely a big one is, is uh, tailoring your reports. Uh, so asking people, you know, what are you looking for? Again, going back to those questions that we, that we formulated at the beginning of the process and making sure that it's not onerous to every time they go in to run the report, they have to go and click, click, click all the different check boxes. So, Civi makes it very easy for you to uh, create different instances of reports and say, okay, even though you got two people running almost the same report, don't make them use the same report. Save a copy so that they have their report and it's tailored to their needs. Um, another feature I'll show you later to configure is you can have Civi auto emailing you these reports on, on a periodic basis. So right there in your inbox, whether you ask for it or not, there's the data. Um, so, <coughs> what experiences have people had with um, implementing a culture of around reporting? Any tips or, or hard lessons? Yeah. So um, we're a, a nonprofit uh, ecological farming association, mm -hmm. and um, to get into Civi, we designed everything around workflows. And so then those workflows exist on a Google Doc Drive that everyone has access to. And uh, underneath those workflows are the uh, instructions for, um, in order to accomplish the workflows through Civi, what Civi instruction sheets. And those Civi instruction sheets live in a folder on the Google Drive, and everybody has access to them. And what we did in terms of implementing it is we went through the workflow with the Civi instructions and custom the Civi instructions so that everybody actually understood what they meant 
and then rehear you know practiced with them. So that has been um, very effective and also in need of continued improvement. Great. Yeah, definitely a process oriented approach is, is going to be effective. Yeah, it's, it's not usually not effective to show people as I'm going to do today. Here's a cool tool. Uh, you know, isn't it neat? Uh, it's, it's, it's really helpful to talk to people in the, the terms that they approach their job, that they use to talk about their job on a daily basis, and to go through those steps uh, all, you know, from start to finish. So it's not just a, an isolated thing. It fits into a bigger picture. I, I have one other thing is that we um, cross-trained um, so that uh, someone who might have a supporting position for the workflow mm -hmm. also was another person in the office well, we, we all sort of went through everything, but the people who actually worked on the specific things, more than one person became trained in how to accomplish it. Oh, and we call our developer. And you call your developer? Yes. The Yes, get help. Uh. <laughs> yes, Alan. Yeah, one thing we found is that uh, in, um, helping users to understand that a report answers a specific question. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, within parameters, right? Um, because sometimes we find that if users assume that the report is built on a certain set of data, right. when indeed it's not. Mm -hmm. um, so helping, helping them to understand which question that report uh, <coughs> really answers. <coughs> Great. Uh, okay, great. Let's get into the the show and tell. Um, so, how many people are on um, four point six already? Bleeding edge. Great. A few of you. Uh, how many are on four point five? Okay. Anybody still on four four? Not not too surprising. Earlier than that. Uh, let's talk later. <laughs> 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 okay, um, so I'm going to show you um, 4.6, um, which has, um, well, I'll show you when we get there. Okay, so first of all, as, as you already saw, um, the report menu will give you uh, all the reports. Where's all the reports? So obviously, there's a lot of reports, um, and you can sort them by uh, content areas. So contacts, contributions, pledges, events, mailing reports, <coughs> memberships, they're all here. Um, so let's look at one. Um, I like the contribution reports. Um, and so big improvement. It used to be you go into configure a report and you had all these fields in this accordion that you scroll way down. You're like, where am I? So now we've got these lovely tabs here. Um, and so most of the reports, they, this top section will look uh, very similar, uh, except uh, they all have different options. Um, and so let's start with the columns. Um, so each, each report um, has columns uh, configured that it is able to display. So when you're looking at a report, don't just take what you're given. Look in here and see what is available to you to, to change. So, you know, we can uh, so select some fields here to run the report. You click preview, and there's our new fields added here. Um, and as I mentioned, you've got different export options. So, if you want to, you can uh, export this to a CSV and manipulate it. Um, you know, obviously not to uh, make your program look better than it is, but uh, maybe you want to do some calculations on it. Uh, PDFs available. Um, if you, for some reason, find it too onerous to deal with CSVs, there is an extension that'll uh, enable exporting directly to Excel. Um, just know that's there. Um, and what else? Okay, uh, so grouping is going to be for, um, for, you can see here it's grouping by receive date and month. So you can change this to weeks, quarters, or years. 
And so we have these aggregates here, um, total contributions, averages. So that's going to be affected by your grouping. And you can see we have this, this month display here. So if we want to go zoom out a little bit, do quarters. Um, did that run? Oh, right, quarter beginning, yeah, it's still the month. So the month that the quarter starts on. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, if you wanted to change something by uh, city or zip code, pretty clear. Okay. Uh, so filtering. Um, next tab here is filters. Again, for the segmentation we talked about, we want to drill down, get some, some insights into what's really going on here, not just look at the high level. Um, and each, each report will define their own filters available. Uh, there'll be some common themes. Um, uh, fil filtering by um, custom data, unfortunately, is not available right out of the box. So that's my that might be something that you want to call your developer for, uh, but it won't be too difficult to add those. Um, but there's a lot you can do using uh, tags and groups. I definitely recommend groups over tags, um, but if you are using tags, it's available. Uh, so <clears throat> you can see that there's different options here for the comparison. Um, you know, whether you want to search whether a substring or Starts with nwin, uh, not equal to, not empty, that sort of thing. Um, and so, and then again, groups you can include and exclude here. Uh, and I wanted to point out in this uh, sc screenshot here um, <coughs> that if you want to get fancy with including and excluding certain groups, you can do that. Um, with groups in Civi, uh, particularly the custom search. If you go into custom searches, uh, by default, there's one called the in include and exclude report, um, not report, search. And so there you can, you can select a specific set, like their, you know, maybe their first time donor, um, large donors versus small donors. Uh, and you can create a new group. Uh, when you get the, the search result here, any search result you can turn into a group. So if you're looking at the report and you're like, I just can't slice and dice this the way I want, remember, you can go in and, and get pretty fancy using groups. And anything that you can search on can be the, the basis of a group. Um, okay. um, so we already covered the email delivery. Um, you can also configure access if you have some sensitive data or you want to give uh, certain people access to data, but you don't want them to see all your financials. You have this option on the access tab. Uh, permissions is a deeper topic uh, outside the scope of this, but um, you can definitely find support on configuring those. Um, and as I was saying about tailoring your reports, uh, it's where you want to come in here to your your title and format, and uh, create a new report instance. So actually, every report is technically a report instance. Um, and so the, the actual report is the code. You can forget I said all that. But just know that you can create as many instances of report as you want. Um, so um, uh, for campaigners, let's say. So if I, let's say I've configured this, I've changed the filters, I've changed the grouping, the columns, all these available settings. Then I want to create a new one, just set a title. You can remind yourself uh, why you did this, uh, tailoring to my job. And then just say, save a copy. And you can edit the title there again. Actually, is this overriding what I just entered? Yeah, OK. So <laughs> hit save a copy first, then enter in what you want to do. Um, and somewhere here, you 
yeah, here. So under access, now that I created this copy, um, if I want this to be available from the, the navigation menu, you can select that here and have it right here at your fingertips rather than going to all reports and, and looking through it. Um, so you can select where exactly you want to put it. Um, and another important option is the available for dashboard. Um, so. okay. uh, just quickly point out, I mean, probably a lot of you have already found this yourself, but a lot of components have dashboards. So for example, you can get a quick participant count here on events, uh, contributions, you can get some high-level reports by default. Um, contributions, mailing reports. Oh, and um, not exactly a, a component dashboard, but you should know that if you're doing mailings, of course, you want to review the effectiveness of those mailings. And uh, in addition to the mailing reports on the Civi components, you can go to any particular mailing and uh, get it, all these statistics like your opens and deliveries, click-throughs. Is the um, accuracy of the reporting any better in 4.6? <laughs> uh, in what respect? Well, for like the openings, for you know, some mail programs, maybe it's the antivirus that opens everything. Or sometimes if somebody opens it on their smartphone, it doesn't show up there. Right. I mean, I think that's a general feature of email. Uh, you know, it's many different clients. There's not much we can do to control that. Uh, I don't know if um, if anybody's found any way to improve that. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it so just apply to CBC yeah. 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 Right. So yeah. The, right. It applies across the board. So think of it as an index. You know, I mean, if you're comparing different mailings, you can compare them to each other. It's not like an absolute number, but it can still give you an indication between different mailings. Mm -hmm. Sending the report as HTML or as an attachment? Sorry, what's up? How's it sending the report as HTML or an attachment? <coughs> oh, I um, I forget what the options It are. sends it as a PDF and also sends you yeah. a link that you can click on, but the link is a real time link. So, I mean, you know, the PDF will be what it was at the instance, the instant that the thing was sent. The link will just take you through to the to the report as <coughs> you show the data as it is now, which um, might not be the same. I don't know if it's changed, but the link used to be very difficult to suppress. So if you're sending it to somebody who doesn't have access to Civi, um, that link can cause a lot of confusion. Okay, I realize I'm running out of time here, or hope you guys don't mind cutting to your lunch a little <laughs> bit. Um, so we'll kind of skip ahead here. Uh, you know, the slides will be available, the video will be available. Here's just a smattering of uh, available extensions from the community. Um, uh, how many people here know how to enable extensions on their site? Great, most of you. So um, uh, definitely go check out Civi Visualize. You'll probably have to go to Add New to download it from the extensions directory. Or if you download it manually, then it'll just show up under Extensions. Don't forget to hit Refresh. Uh, go ahead and enable that. And then once you have it enabled, then under reports, you'll get a new item here for Civi Visualize. And now it gets exciting. So uh, there's some, again, remember Civi Visualize is more of a, a framework. What they've done is in, incorporated some, some great libraries for JavaScript, for graphing, uh, D3 and, and DC. Um, so this is just the beginning. These, these are really examples of what can be done, uh, but they're also pretty useful. Um, ooh, right? <laughs> and one of the coolest things about this, I think, is um, uh, the fact that you've got several charts here, right? And they're showing different things. Here we've got the payment instrument. Uh, let's see, this is showing, what is that one? Uh, how do we actually tell what the payment instrument is? That's a good question. Well, like when you click on one of the things, it's like filtering it down to, to that particular item. 
I always do this. I get in trouble with scrolling over certain graphs. Okay, so there we go. So it checks. Yeah. Uh, so you can kind of drill down and say, okay, who are these people donating with checks? What's up with that? And you can see there's more organizations. Um, apparently, checks come in on Sundays and Thursdays. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but as you probably already noticed, these, these are all linked together. So if I select one thing here, like, um, so if we want to see how our organization's paying, you can see they're, you know, the split is more 50-50. So all the graphs are tied together. And then uh, it gets really cool with these uh, timeline graphs. So you can see here, uh, fortunately, our donations are going up and up and up. Uh, but if you want to drill down into, hold on. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let's try it again. Okay. So we should be able to click here. Well, that's interesting. It doesn't know which graph I'm clicking on, but, uh, or I guess maybe it doesn't want me to click on that one. That's, okay, here we go. So once you just select the year here. So if we want to look at particular date range, we can do that. And then we have our, well, I chose the wrong date range. But Not by month reset. You have to reset the month range. I think they're still there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Um, so that's the the major feature of um, of Civi Contribute. Again, I mean Civi Visualize and. Um, Unfortunately, the testing data uh, does not work so well for contacts because that's all based off of the, um, the created date, which the demo data does not have. But, um, and like I was saying before, make it really easy. Uh, clicking around is a lot to ask of people. Um, so go in and configure your dashboard and just drag and drop these reports onto your dashboard, and then you'll have them right there. Let's see, needs a little work. Submit, submit your bugs. Play, play with this over lunch. Uh, so yeah, any last questions? No? Great, thank you all for coming. Thank you.